You're most likely running your operating system, core applications, and games from an SSD. Whether it's an NVMe type SSD like this, or a 2.5 inch SSD like so. You want to use one of these to maximize speed for more demanding tasks. But if you have a bunch of extra files like music, movies, and video clips that take up a lot of space but you don't necessarily need to squeeze every millisecond of speed out of, you might find yourself rapidly running out of space. Once you're in that situation, you might find yourself frantically grasping for USB flash drives, which can be very annoying and also dangerous. Ah! Or you might find yourself desperately looking for a location to plug in an external hard drive, which again can be annoying and also very dangerous. <laughs> Now you could do something like upgrade your SSD to a larger size, but that's potentially limiting and also typically very expensive. You could do like we've done in previous videos and build sort of a home network storage system out of an old computer, but you might not necessarily even need that much space. And also you might not want to put that much time and effort into something that will possibly send you into a pool noodle rage. But if you're running an Office PC type desktop similar to this, there might be some quick, easy, and relatively inexpensive options that you might not even be aware of. Even though I imagine most people who watch this channel are probably aware of at least the first one. Watch it anyway! Watch it anyway! But a lot of people, especially the average user, might not even be aware of these tricks. Our first little trick type of thing, it's not necessarily a trick, but it might be depending on whatever, it doesn't matter, is very simple simple 3.5 inch HDD. Now these types of hard drives, unlike SSDs, aren't quite as fast but are way cheaper. And what we want to do, which most PC cases allow for, and we'll show I'll show you in a few cases, is run this HDD in addition to our SSD. So all of the things we need the most speed for, like the operating system and your core applications and games and stuff, that's still going to be running from your SSD. But we just want to add an additional HDD for extra storage for file types like music and maybe old video clips. So we're going to take our standard office PC type computer case, crack this open, and I'll show you where there's a caddy for an HDD that we can add as additional storage. And it really is pretty straightforward. We just want to go ahead and crack open the case. And you can see right at the top here, and I do like how they make this easy on these old pro desks and elite desks, is our 3.5 inch HDD caddy right on the top. Now depending on your case, your caddy might look different. You might need a hard drive caddy bay or kind of screws like we have on this one. But once we have these screws in here like this, you can just drop the HDD directly in and you should have an extra SATA power cable which looks like this. And then as far as the data cable, we, we need an additional data cable to run from the motherboard to the hard drive. I, I found that usually there's not an extra one of these in the case, especially if you're using an older computer, but they're only a couple bucks on Amazon. And if you get that extra SATA cable, all you need to do is connect it to any SATA port on the motherboard and then into your HDD. Now we will have to format that drive for storage storage, which isn't terribly difficult, but we'll go over that towards the end of the video. First, I want to show you a couple more tricks, just in case you don't happen to have an extra caddy for an HDD. If your case doesn't have a caddy for a 3.5 inch hard drive, does it have a large optical drive bay that looks like this, and when removed is roughly this size? Or does it have a 5.25 inch expansion bay like on the front of this PC? If so, you can use one of these devices that I actually like a lot. What you can do is remove that optical drive bay or just insert this into the 5.25 inch expansion bay and I'll show you how to do that quickly. But essentially, you just connect your SATA power and data cables to the back of this device. It sits in the bay like this and you can open up the front of this caddy, swap in your 3.5 inch hard drive, close the caddy, then boot the computer, and add as you fill 3.5 inch hard drives for additional storage, you can just take the old one out, open this up and put the new one in. You only have to install this once and then you can pretty much hot swap out 3.5 inch hard drives. What we want to do is just get our 
front cover off and have our bay opened up. Then typically you can slide these right in and usually you want to get at least one screw in this thing. Ideally more than one if they line up or if you have enough. Sometimes you can find the screws that you can put in these. There'll be some extra ones right in the case. This PC had some extra screws right here in the case. So we're just going to drop one of those in real quick and then we're going to go ahead and hook up our cables like I mentioned and we should pretty much be set. So now as I mentioned we can just take our hard drive for additional storage. Just open this right up. Slide our hard drive just right into that bay we installed and then when we shut this it will slide the hard drive connectors right into place in the caddy and that hard drive is now connected. Now for one final tidbit of trickery. Let's say you do have an optical drive tray but it's not like a larger optical drive that fits in the 5.25 inch bay. Let's say it's just a small tray like the one on this computer. That's where we can install one of these devices. And these are also pretty neat. It's not as cool as you might hope or as I hoped. It would be awesome if this worked like an actual optical drive where you could push the button and it kind of glides out and you can put your 2.5 inch hard drives in. That's essentially what it is but it's all manual so you can't push the button and make it pop out unfortunately. But the good news about these is they're only around seven or eight dollars on Amazon and they're still pretty handy. So these only hold 2.5 inch hard drives obviously and not 3.5 inch but that can still be okay for additional storage because there are 2.5 inch HDDs and they tend to be relatively cheap. Now you install these in the same way that you install the last bay that I showed you for the 3.5 inch. Essentially you just pop out this optical drive tray, slide this in, and once again connect your cables to the back. One thing you might want to look out for when you're doing that, if you think you might be swapping these out a lot, you might want to try to find longer connector cables. If the cables in the back are long enough, you can still slide it out to essentially swap out drives on the fly. But these are also pretty neat and also a good option for additional hard drive storage. Now, Finally, those are the trickeries or whatever, Not, I don't know if you would consider them tricks necessarily, but tips nonetheless, maybe. So the last thing we'll do is really quickly, I'll just show you how to format one of these drives once you've inserted them in any of the ways we've just shown. With our new drive installed, go ahead and turn on the computer. Once everything loads, click on the search bar in the bottom left and type in disk M for the disk manager and uh, I think it'll say create or format hard disk partitions or something like that and click that to open disk manager. Now in my case it automatically detected that there was a new disk installed and if you have to select one manually or whatever just make sure be certain that you are using the new drive that you added and that you're not overwriting or formatting your main your primary drive with your operating system and stuff on it. So I just went ahead and selected OK there. Right click, new simple volume, and I'm just going to use the entirety of the space. As far as assigning the drive letter, that's up to you. I always like to use something something weird that I know is not going to conflict with any existing like thumb drives or external devices or anything like that. So I'm just going to go ahead and do Z, but that's up to you. And then just go through the rest of the steps for formatting. Now you'll see it automatically popped up, but we have this new volume Z. And in the future, I could just go to this PC, and we'll see it right here. There's our new drive, Z. And we, we can create a shortcut to that or do whatever we need to. And now it's really simple, so I just got a quick setup. I have some of my old files here on the left, and then the new drive, the folder for the new drive, Z, open on the right. And now we can just drag and drop files and just save them to that secondary storage. Save them directly to that 3.5 inch hard drive that we just added. And I'm just gonna do like one of them, just as an example, but it's as simple as drag and drop. But anyway, that's all for this one, and I appreciate everyone who's been watching, as always, especially if you made it this far. That is awesome, and I'll catch you later.